Hello and welcome to this video on Affinity Photo 2, the iPad edition. Just as Affinity updated and relaunched Affinity Photo and the other Affinity programs as version 2, it also updated its iPad version. And in this video, we'll take a look at how to use Affinity Photo 2 for iPad, a few of the things that are new, and how to move your files from your desktop computer to your iPad and back again with all your edits intact and ready to pick up where you left off with your editing. So let's start with an image we want to work on. Our images are stored on a desktop Mac. So the first step is to get these from the computer to the iPad. That's pretty easy. Macs come with iCloud online drive storage shared by both machines. You get a certain amount of storage free, so that may be plenty. Otherwise, you can upgrade your iCloud storage capacity with a variety of tiered subscription prices. So, we already have a folder in iCloud Drive for Affinity Photo from when we were using the older version. So, just to make sure our file is easy to find, we'll use this. You can use other services besides iCloud Drive, such as Dropbox, or if you use Apple Photos, you can open or import images into Affinity Photo 2 for iPad straight from Photos. Now, here we are on the home screen of Affinity Photo for iPad, and there are a number of sections in the left panel. Live Docs is where we'll find our current work in progress, and below this is a new button for creating a new document from scratch, or a new panorama, image stack, focus merge, or HDR merge file, for example. Already we can see how closely Affinity Photo for iPad matches the tools and capabilities of the full-blown desktop version. Below the new button is an open button, and this is what we'll use to open the raw file we dragged into the Affinity Photo iCloud Drive folder on our desktop machine. There is also an import option, and there is a subtle difference. If you use the open button on a JPEG or a TIFF image, Affinity Photo will offer the option to save over it when you've finished editing. If you use the import option, it's effectively creating a copy, so the original remains separate and safe. We're working on a raw file, and you can't save over these, so effectively the open button is importing a version of the file for editing anyway. Because we're working on a raw file, it opens an Affinity Photos Develop Persona, just as it would in the desktop version. We need to make any necessary raw develop changes, and then tap the tick icon on the top toolbar to confirm these before we can edit the image in a regular photo persona. This is where the Affinity Photo 2 for iPad version mirrors the improvements in the Affinity Photo 2 desktop program. If you select the Raw Layer Embedded option in the top toolbar, you'll be able to come back to your raw develop settings later and change them if you need to. Once you tap the tick icon, your raw file is developed and appears in the Photo Persona. You'll see a vertical toolbar on the left side of the screen, which reflects what you see in a desktop version. This is one of the updates in Affinity Photo for iPad version 2. And you can change personas, for example, by tapping the Photo Persona button on the top toolbar to reveal the others. Now let's go across to the right toolbar, where you get a kind of condensed version of the sidebar in the desktop version. If we tap on the Layers button near the top, we see a Layers panel just like the one in the desktop version. And right now there's just a single layer for our process photo. So let's try some edits. Let's try an adjustment by tapping on the Adjustments button below the Layers button on the right toolbar. We'll try a split toning adjustment on this image of a vintage car. Here you'll see that Affinity Photo 2 for iPad does a few things differently to the desktop version, adding controls specifically designed for touch rather than mouse control. We can tap, hold, and drag up, down on these circular gadgets to change the hue and saturation of our split tone effect. It can take a little while to get used to the different gestures required for touch control, but if you persevere, you soon find out that they are both fast and logical. Let's try something else. We can add one of Affinity Photo's non-destructive live filters, but there is something to pay attention to here. There is an Add Live Filter slider at the top, and if you don't push this to the right, the live filters will be applied directly to the image layer, which must be selected first. If you do want non-destructive, reversible effects, make sure you push this slider to the right. So now, let's say we want to add some simulated depth of field blur. We tap this option, 
and we see a circular depth of field gadget on the image. First though, let's increase the blur value so that we can see the effect live. Now we can move this gadget around and drag on the edge handles to change its shape until we get the look we want. It looks most natural if we place it near the top of one of the front wheels on this old car. Let's do one more thing. We'll add a half tone live filter to give the look of an old fashioned newspaper or magazine illustration. The vertical sliders on the left control the properties of the filter, so we can play around with these as much as we need to and, because it's a live filter, we can come back later to change them if we decide we don't like the effect. You will see as you work that the layers panel shows all the adjustments and live filters you've added and you can tap, hold, drag these to change the order. This will make a difference to the look of the final image. For example, if we drag the half tone filter above the split toning adjustment, it will override the color to make the image black and white. Similarly, if we position the depth of field filter right at the top, it will also blur the half tone effect, which looks strong, so the layer order does matter. Now we can either finish this image here and now on the iPad, or save it and come back to it later on our desktop computer. So how does this work? First, we can tap the home button to go back to all our live documents and the image we've been working on is right there. It's safely stored on the iPad with all its edits, but it's not yet available to our desktop computer. So what we need to do is click the button at the top right hand corner of the image thumbnail and choose save or save as. This will save our work in progress as a new .air photo format document. It can take a minute or so to save your new file and longer still to upload a large multi-layer edited image to iCloud. But once that's done, we can see the new photo in our iCloud Drive Affinity Photo folder on our desktop machine and open it up in Affinity Photo to see all our layers and adjustments intact and just as we left them. What's amazing about Affinity Photo 2 for iPad is how Affinity has managed to include here all the new features in the desktop version. The whole user interface has been brought much closer to the desktop version so that they feel more consistent. And the iPad version has the same new non-destructive raw develop, compound masks and live masks of the desktop version. That's impressive. So that's it for our quick tour of Affinity Photo 2 for iPad. Thanks for watching.